It's your girl, Megan James, and you are now tuned into the third episode of the day for the Hollywood Group Chat Podcast, period. This episode, too, is sponsored by Kaleidoscope Hair Products from The Brat. So if you got dreads, locks, braids, twisties, whatever, these are the products for you. It's all natural hair products. You can find it at Target, um, KaleidoscopeHairProducts.com, CVS, and I've seen it in like multiple beauty supplies around Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Brat. Yes, I okay, love them. So we're going to get started. Okay. So, oh, wait, wait. I got to introduce my guest. You guys, <laughs> we have a very, 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 very special guest today. Um, she goes by the name of Jessica Dime. We know her from Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, you did six seasons of Love & Hip Hop, right? I did. Or no, was it I did more? like three. Really? Yeah. I feel like it was, did you do some like special episodes or something like that? Um, I feel like I seen you on more seasons than three. No, it was only three. I just was Ugh, out there when I came on, so it was like a big thing. So, but, how was your experience uh, filming that show? Um, it was up and down because you know um, I really came into love and hip hop to focus on my music and try mm-hmm. to get my music out. And you know, once you get into the reality TV world of it, it's like you get distracted, right? Yeah, it ain't even about the music no more. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing. But I'm always grateful for the opportunity. Because it, it put me in front of so many faces, and still to this day, even though I haven't been on there in a long time, everybody still be like, damn. Hey, girl. When they see me, I yeah. be like, damn, you still remember me? But they do. Are you still cool with uh, any of your castmates? Um, I'm still cool with everybody. And this has really always been. I never really got a chance to, like, hang with a lot of them outside of filming and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm still cool with everybody. Like, I ain't really got no problem with none of them. Where are you from originally? Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis. Uh-huh. How long have you been in Atlanta? Um, Since I started my first season of Love & Hip Hop, I came for that. What and year I've been is that? At, that was 20... Oh, what year was that? It had to be like 2015? Mm-hmm. 2014, 2015? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I had my daughter in 2018. So, yeah, I had been on there like three years. So, how has your experience been just living in Atlanta? Because I just moved here. So. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I actually love Atlanta. Atlanta mm-hmm. is a vibe. It's always exciting, fun, things to do. Um, and then, you know, I'm kind of like, where I'm from, I'm, I'm kind of like, more entwined with the street type of, you know, like I love to go hang out and stuff like yeah. that. So I still end up being real cool with like the so-called street guys in Atlanta. They mm-hmm. always been so 100, looked out, mm-hmm. always been a good time, you know. So I, I like Atlanta. It's a different, it's nothing like Atlanta, that's mm-hmm. for sure. You right. can't get the vibe nowhere else. Right. You know what? I've also like experienced like every time I come to Atlanta, I've always had a great time. And that's mm-hmm. what I love about it. Me and too. It, it made me want to move here. The food is good. The people are nice. Mm-hmm. I love to see like black people in luxury. Like, yes. And you, you know, know, this is like it. It's like the the black Hollywood, like they yes. say. It's like because in LA, you don't really see black people. Like you walk into like a doctor's office, all the doctors are white. Mm-hmm. You walk into a lawyer's office, all the lawyers are white. It's mm-hmm. like here you feel more confident because you yes. go into places of business of stature and you see people that look like you. Yes. And I love that everywhere. about this place. So, everywhere. Yes. Okay, so back in the day, sis. What did um, I do, honey? <laughs> you used to be a dancer at KOD, uh-huh. right? How's your experience as a dancer at KOD? Like, how old were you? What got you into dancing? Uh, um, I was probably like about 22, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the KOD experience was different than anything cuz I had already danced before KOD. Okay, so like a little about bit that. a little bit before KOD, but I didn't start at KOD. KOD okay. opened in the midst of me being in Miami cuz I oh, started okay. off in like the hood club, take one. It's like a hole in the wall, but it was the vibe. It, was it given G5? Or the G5 is a little G5 was open then too, but it was called Diamonds. Okay. So I kind of would go to Diamonds when I could, but Take One was like my first club I worked at. Mm-hmm. Then eventually King of Diamonds opened up. And I was the first one of the first girls to work there. That was a it was like a staple in the culture. Mm-hmm. It was different. It was, it like, was back in the day. Yeah, yeah. It was like it made it different for us as dancers when we did King of when we worked at King of Diamonds, because it's almost like we would looked at like stars almost. Yeah. It was like, damn, you seen Black China, you seen Tip Drill, you seen Platinum, you seen this person, you did. That's what I was about to ask you. Did you dance with Black China? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah, we always was close. 
she always been so sweet she and is just sweet. welcoming yeah. and stuff like that. Because I remember I was coming back and forth from Memphis and stuff, and she was like, you can stay with me, Dime. And Aww. I actually stayed with her for a little while mm-hmm. in her spot. And we we used to grind together, like mm-hmm. really go on grinds. We're going to grind for 30 days. We're going to go to day shift and night shift, and we're going to work. Oh, y'all was getting to yeah, the bag. Yeah, we was getting to the bag. Getting we to had the bag. suitcases of money. So we really were working and, and just mm-hmm. like focus. So it was like a big thing, I guess, to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, because I ain't seen nothing like it since. Me neither, honestly, because <laughs> I feel like back in the day, because I've never danced, but like mm-hmm. both of my sisters are strippers, both of them. Okay. And so, like, I feel like back in the day, it was less, for some reason, I feel like it was less competition. Like, yeah. I feel like the girls stuck together mm-hmm. as, like, okay, we are dancers, like, fuck these niggas, let's get this money. Right. Versus, like, today where everybody's like, ooh, I'm cuter than you, move mm-hmm. around. So it was like more of a sisterhood versus, like, yeah, we fought a lot too, though. Oh. Yeah, but we didn't fight over like or nothing. We fought over like money and disagreements about money and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But we did get we we had our issues. But like you said, it really was more of a sisterhood. We hung out. That I don't know how the girls are now in the club, but we hung out. We went to live on Sundays together, mm-hmm. and you know did did things together. So. It definitely was a sisterhood, but we did, we used to argue down. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, before Love and Hip Hop, like, what was your, like, what was your job? Like, were you stripping up until then, or what did you do b- before Love and Hip Hop? Um, well, before Love and Hip Hop, yeah, I was a dancer. Mm-hmm. Um, I was signed to Flow Rider. That's how I stopped dancing. I, they told me um, when I started rapping um, if I wanted to, like, they was like, if you want to sign a deal, you got to stop dancing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, damn, I was making a lot of money. Right. So I was like, damn, okay. So I just stopped dancing. But before that, before being a dancer in Memphis, I was like, my family had a barbecue restaurant. So I used to work there as a waitress. Mm-hmm. I used to get little call center jobs, little stuff like that. I wasn't never going to be broke, though. Period. Like, I always kept something going on. Right. Even if it wasn't, like, the craziest job, I still was like, if I was working, I still had something going on on the side, Period. honey, and give me some money. Mm-hmm. So I kept, I kept myself up. How did you get discovered, like, as a rapper? Oh, well, I feel like I just started. Were you, like, sending your music out to people? Like, no. to be signed to Flo Rida back in the day, like, that's a thing. That's crazy. Yeah. I be looking at it, like, now, like, damn, that was crazy. That was no, big. That's crazy. That that's a big, big deal. Yeah. Uh, um, I was dancing, and... I told this story not too long ago. It was a it was a security guard that worked at the club, and his name was Valentino. And he was uh, when I used to dance, I didn't know pole tricks. I just knew how to clap my ass real good, mm-hmm. and I knew what songs to dance to to make niggas excited and want to throw the money. Mm-hmm. And I used to just be up there rapping it with them. They felt like they was dancing with their homeboy right, or something like. Right. So. He came to me one day. He was like, have you ever thought about being... I'm dancing on the stage. It's a slow night. I never forget it. And he was like, have you ever thought about rapping Dime? And he's screaming up on the stage while I'm up here because it came down as our stage was up a little higher. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nigga, no. Nah. He was <laughs> like, you should try it. All you do is rap the song. I was like... Mm. And he was like musical and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he was like, let's go to the studio. And I was like, all right, I'll try it. So we went to the studio. It was like actually not too far from the club. Mm-hmm. And... um. I want to hear how I sound. I sounded all right, so I started putting my money into recording, and I started recording videos outside of King of Diamonds, dressed up, makeup done, doing freestyles and stuff like that, and Flo heard about it, like, mm. through the streets and stuff like that, and he hit me up, and he was like, I want to sign you, That's and I was so like, dope. what? He was like, yeah. I was like, damn. So mm-hmm. I was going to the studio. You know, I feel like sometimes they have to feel you out and see, is this girl really an artist or she making up stuff? Right. So they had me going to the, coming to the studio. They saw I was really writing and really recording and knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. So um, they offered me a deal, but they was like, if you, if you sign a deal, you got to stop dancing. Because yeah. back then I was a dancer at King of Diamonds. It was going to be like... You rapping and you a stripper, but it probably would have worked. It probably would have worked if it was like this day and age. Right. You know? Yeah. Because we didn't have all that shit. I remember um, after I got off of Bad Girls Club in like 2012 or 13, whatever, mm-hmm. Instagram had just came out. Yeah. So if I, like if Instagram would have been out like throughout that whole time, it would have been way different. Way for us. different. Way different. Y'all probably would have had a lot of more like opinions. Yeah. And, yeah, because I, I remember that being a thing when I was on Love and Hip Hop, like the comments and shit. 
So speaking of loving hip hop, are you and Jocelyn still enemies or frenemies or what's T? Well, I feel like me and Jocelyn are cool. Okay. It ain't no, it ain't no um frenemies, enemies, nothing like that. We just cordial. Like mm -hmm. we like she had hit me not too long ago and she was just like, we kinda like bun. Like we hit mm -hmm. each other every now and then, talk on FaceTime and stuff like that. I ain't heard from her in a minute. Mm -hmm. Well, I, she DM me after the little altercation at the fight. Over there. Mm -hmm. But after that, I haven't I haven't spoke to her. Okay, so you used to date Scrappy, right? No, girl. Never? Never. Oh, okay, that was that was thing. You did reality TV. Okay, so this, that, that, was, was that was... That was a storyline. That was a key. It was a key. That was a cackle. Okay, it was a key. It was. But, but I knew people was going to think that. I was so mad. I was like, people are really going to think... I was dating, I was dating him. him. Not I that, really not thought y'all did date, though. Not that there's anything wrong with him. I'm not throwing shade at him. Yeah. Strep is a cool person. Yeah. I ain't got nothing against him. But just, I know me and myself as a person, I would have never dated him in real life. So right. I just... You was just like, okay. I was, I was you being... You was over it. Yeah, I was like, y'all serious? I was like, all right, whatever. Do y'all do you have a relationship with Mona Scott still? No, I haven't talked to Mona in since I didn't come to the, the, to the reunion. And so um, I was doing research... And it said that they passed on your wedding special, and that like mm -hmm. pissed me off low key, <laughs> because it's like you know they use they use us right, they, get, they use our lives, our storylines, all la 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 la. Mm -hmm. But it's like when something good is happening to us, it's like y'all want to pass on that. It's mm -hmm. not enough drama for y'all. Yeah, so, they didn't want to give me a special. Was that your last straw with them? You was like fuck y'all or what? Um, I feel like that start that that gave they went toward my attitude toward them mm -hmm. because um. My last little encounter with them, I had just had blessing, and um, I wasn't even six weeks yet, but I was close to it, and it was time for the reunion. Mm -hmm. And they wanted me to come to the reunion, and one of the producers wanted to use the makeup artist that I was comfortable with using. And you know, after you have a baby, you be like fat and feel well, not you fat, but you get the baby weight, the water weight. You just, you just don't, don't feel, feel yourself. Yeah, your nose be spread, and I'm still six weeks in. Yeah. So I wanted the person I was comfortable with, especially on that reunion stage with the big lights and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm going through postpartum. I'm not feeling myself, so I'm just like, I'm just not gonna come then, you know? Because it was like a producer has to use the makeup artist, Mimi and Rashida. Okay, I understand Mimi and Rashida, but why a producer, producer before me? Right. I feel like that was like a slap in the face after I didn't get y'all a baby gave y'all an engagement whole my whole fucking life let mm -hmm. y'all embarrass me let y'all get think, it in let y'all think i dated scrappy let y'all right. think i dated scrappy <laughs> let bambi think i was on her man <laughs> we cool now though but <laughs> it was just a lot and i felt disrespected and yeah. mona had hit me up and was like you need to go ahead and go to the reunion and i didn't go yeah and i feel like they thought there was you know too much but it was already built up anger with me from them not doing my special my right. wedding special right i didn't like that so how did you meet your husband? You know, me and my husband been cool for years, mm -hmm. like high school, um, right out of college type shit. We kept it, kept in touch. You know, you I don't know if you got that type of person, but it's like the type of person that I ain't gonna lie. I always, if even if I had a dude, if he hit me up, I was like cheating. Like hey, yeah, yeah it was bad. <laughs> that was just like my guy. It yeah. was like that good for me yeah so he but he had a situation going on which i you know respected and once i got on tv and he hit me up because we we talked and we he flew me out you know it was we like kept an on it. and off yeah, yeah but when i when when i was on tv and he hit me up i was like because mm -mm, i know you got something going on i don't right. want to be in the middle of something like that but just so happened they had broke up mm. and i was like well shit Let's get it. Yeah. And we've been together ever since. Right. Ever since. And you guys have two kids, right? Mm -hmm. so Wisdom you, you and blessing. Just, you just had a baby. Yes, he's one. Oh! Yes, he's so cute. He's so how so was it starting over? Because you know, like, parents will be like, okay, I got a kid. I'm cool. And then you have another one. You're like, oh, my God, I got to start all the way the fuck over. Yeah, because blessing is five. Oh, my Wisdom God. Wisdom is a one. Long, that's a big I'm, gap. Yeah, that's yeah. a big gap. It's not that big, but if I would have waited a little bit longer, it would have been, like, been too mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Because blessing is very helpful with her little brother so mm -hmm. it's it's kind of works out but wisdom is like one of them babies you got to keep your eyes on him like it's no he be bless <laughs> yes blessing was more laid back and mm -hmm. cool the boys and the girls totally different mm -hmm. like they just two different animals like wisdom is not to be played with are you gonna have any more i'm done I'm done. Okay, girl. Yeah, I'm done, girl. <laughs> I am done. I got a lot of stuff I, I need to do. I got my boy. I got my girl. I got my stepson. Sean mm -hmm. had a son previous to our, our mm -hmm. uh, marriage. So I'm cool. So um, how was your experience with Sean on Marriage Boot Camp? Mm, 
Mm-mm-mm. Because, like, I don't know if I could bring my husband on that show. Um, with them bitches mm-hmm. and their husbands and their problems. Well, it <laughs> wasn't even it. It wasn't even it. It wasn't that? No, they was all cool because we, we didn't know who we were going to be in the house with. But yeah. once we found out, Walker and um, Sean was already cool before oh, okay, years cool. before me and him even got together. Mm-hmm. So... That was cool. Mo was cool. Me and Tammy was cool by the end, even though we had little stuff on the show. We was mm-hmm. cool. Um, so, and even Soldier Boy was cool. Yeah. But it was more so of them wanting us to be so serious all the time, and we really didn't have no issues. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like we were just really making up stuff to be on there, honestly, because mm-hmm. we was already married. Right. So it was like. They pay good, so I don't blame There me. we go. Yeah, so they pay it was good. like it was like a, a good pay. Only thing I didn't like was leaving Blessing for so long. It was two weeks? Yep, 14 yeah. days. Yeah. So that was a lot. Yeah. She was little then. She had just got bo- she was just born. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this a lot. And then they let her come one time, and she hollered from the time she got in their house. She had to leave. I'm she was screaming. just screaming, crying. She never do cry like that. Yeah. But it was like some in that house. Yeah, and I be feeling like they be using the same house over and over and over, and it's just bad energy. And it's dirty. Yeah. The kitchen dirty. She Everything was not dirty feeling it. I was all. like, get my baby out of here. Okay. So, how did you meet the owner of Now That's TV? <laughs> and how was your experience working with them? Well, hmm. Uh, <laughs> I met T because, okay, so I got an email saying they wanted me to do something. So I was like, what is this? Now there's TV. So I was like, okay, let me research a little bit. So once I seen what it was, I ended up hitting them up and was like, okay, well, we could go ahead. Let's meet up and see what what we got. Mm -hmm. So I ended up meeting up with them and told them my idea. Well, I really was thinking they was going to be on some, like, come be on one of our shows. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, what if they say I need to be on one? I was like, I'm not fighting to the death, so I, I ain't going to be able to do it. Right. But I ended up telling him my idea that I already had for my show, The Mint. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it sound good. I was like, do it sound like a good idea? He was like, hell yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, you think you want to do it? He was like, yeah, but I didn't know he was that serious, yeah. honestly. I was like, you know, people be talking shit, yeah. and they don't come through with shit. So I was like, well, when you want to start? He was like, it was like literally probably, probably like. probably like tomorrow. Yes, it was crazy. <laughs> I was like, shit. Okay, yeah. well, I just got to be ready. Yeah. Because it was a good opportunity. I feel like I like to grow with people. Yeah. They only a year in. Yeah. Doing big shit, And I'm just, I'm happy to be involved in mm-hmm. it. Okay, so what inspired you to come up with The Mint? Like, like where did that... Like, why? Why the mint? Okay, why so... Why is the name? I want to know everything. Everything? Okay, so <laughs> listen. Okay, so I was with Queen, the one who brought me here. Mm-hmm. And we were trying to fit, because I hadn't put out music in a while. So she was encouraging me to just, like, put out the stuff you got. Let's get to the studio, listen to what you got. So I got hundreds of songs. So mm-hmm. we in the studio listening. She was like, this shit fire, da 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 We picking through songs, what we like, don't like. And she was like, well, what are we going to name it? So I'm like, I don't know. I ain't, I ain't figured it out, because I want my shit to hit hard, because mm-hmm. I'm coming back. And so she I So was you bringing like, back some new music, too? No, it's going to be music, new music on the show. Everything. Oh, period. Yeah, I'm bringing out new okay, shit. Ready. It's going to be a whole Mint soundtrack. Oh, cool. Yeah. I got the girls turning in music. Everybody. Okay, So cool. it's going to be good. Um, So we listening. So I'm like, somebody in there was like, Diamond, you wear diamonds because you you into diamonds and diamond. I said, but my name is not Diamond. My name is Dime. Dime Peace. Yeah. So where she was like, where are di- diamonds made and pressure makes diamonds? I'm like, that ain't it. So... <laughs> Um, I was like, where are dimes made? And then we started Googling this U.S. Mint. So I'm like, okay. Hey, I get it. I get it. The Mint, I get it. You get it I now? get it, I get it. I'm here, we here. I get it, I get it. So it's like, I was like, okay. Let's just take the, the Mint. Like this, I like that. But I'm thinking like, because I wanted to come on my album like, when I got on TV on Love and Hip Hop, it was like, she too rough around the edges. She country. She did. She got this pink hair, these long nails. Where did she come from? This stripper fight music and then things like that. But now I feel like that's all you hear. Yeah. So it's like I was kind of like foreign to people. And it's like I was like, I feel you like it's a lot of making molds. Yeah. Not to say I'm here or there, but it was a lot of people that did watch and look at me and pick up stuff and do this. And then, and so I just wanted to put my foot down and plant my foot down with putting out new music and say, I'm the mint. This is where I came from. I done made and mold a lot of you b****, but yeah. y'all don't want to admit it. Right. So that's what I came up with that from. So then I was like, okay, 
I started thinking of the show idea. I was like, I want to help some girls. Like, I want to reach out. I know I want to get back on TV, and I know people expecting family mm -hmm. but I want to get in an element with girl, like other women because yeah. that's where I'm good at. Like, with my family, too, we got yeah. some stuff we working on, too. But I really, like, wanted to get back in the in the gist of things. Yeah. So I was like, I want to do a show with, with nothing but girls. Like, I want to kind of like pattern this after my story. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get girls that's in the strip club currently. You can't be former dancer, nothing. You got to be dancing right now mm -hmm. and want to get out mm -hmm. and get into the industry, be a rapper, singer, actor, business person. Because mm -hmm. I kind of do all this stuff. It right. kind of just happened for me. Right. So I want to kind of like guide them through, help them, mold them into what they want to be. Because you already know how it is. Mm -hmm. You got to be a to even make it this long is me and you to made yeah. it in the industry. Yeah. So if they trying to step out of the club and step into the to the game, bitch, I want to see what you made of. Right. I want you to be bigger than me. All right. Me. I'm right. trying to see what you working with. So that's where I came up with the mix because that's what we doing. We making we molding more dimes. Period. You like it? I love it. The story is everything, and I love like the concept behind it because now I get it. You get it. Now? I get it. <laughs> um, how do you feel when people compare the Mint to Jocelyn's Cabaret? Like, how do you feel when people be like, "Oh, she copied," la la la? Like, what what do you think about that? I'm just being honest. Like, when like y'all really be honest with y'all self? When did y'all ever think in y'all mind like Jessica Dime? copying Jocelyn. Like, has it ever been an outfit or hairstyle or any, like, I've never in my life thought of, it, shout out to her. Like, I fuck with Jocelyn. She got her own style, but I never look at her and say, I want to be like her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's never that. I didn't even, she wasn't even going through my mind when I thought of this concept. Right. But the fact that she four seasons in and I'm an audition episode in and they talking about comparing that's it to like is really good. That's, for you. I mean, for me, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a comparison because it's both exotic dancer shows, but it's not the same thing. And mm -hmm. it kind of irks me a little bit. It gets on my nerves real bad because what? Like, it's nothing the same. She's still dancing. They still dancing. They on tour with her. And that's a good thing. That's a good opportunity for the girls that want to continue to dance. Mm -hmm. But the girls that reach out to me, they don't want to dance no more. Right. I don't dance no more. So how can I guide somebody? It's nothing. It can't be the same because right. they still dancing. We're not. Okay. So the girls that are on the mint, um, does anybody's like their th what they want to do? Does I don't know how to say this. Like you, you said that the girls want to get out the club. Mm -hmm. So does anybody's like dream? Like which one stands out to you the most? You don't have to tell me which girl, but I'm sure each girl has like a dream. Like I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Which one like do you stands out to you the most, or makes you feel like more connected to as her like her story or her dream to get out the club? Um. I would have Don't to tell us who, because we want to wait and see. But right. just tell us what the dream is. Um, I think <laughs> I think the girls that's doing the music, mm -hmm. of course, they're going to resonate with me a, a, more because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. But even the girls, um, it was one girl that said she wanted to own a strip club, but she said there's no women strip club owners. So I was like, there's some big pants to skirt, pants, whatever to feel. Yeah. Some big shoes to feel to be a strip club owner because, you know... And that's something I wanted to, like, get with her on because that's something I kind of wanted to do, Period. too. So mm -hmm. that was, like, a big thing for me. I was like, okay, she got, mm -hmm. she got her. That's a high stand. You know, mm -hmm. that's a big thing to own a club and you a woman to mm -hmm. be able to control that many women. So mm -hmm. I thought that stood out to me. So what are the qualifications to to be on the mint? Like, if you, had, you, if you could pick, like, 10 girls on your cast, like, what – a, B, C, D, and E, do they have to check off your list for you to be like, okay, here you go. Would they get a dime dollar, right? Mm-hmm. See, I yeah, did my you research. Know. <laughs> You've so, been watching. So, um, like, what are what are the standards to be on the mint? Um, I got the mint commandments. Mm -hmm. So, you got to watch the feet. It's 10 of them. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was at the auditions and I was looking for them and when we was searching and people were sending in tapes and stuff like that, um... I wanted I wanted girls that I felt like personality wise, even though I want them to be fine, I wanted their personalities to be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. To where I'm like, damn, can I even handle this? Bitch? Because that's basically what I was. Yeah. Like, where did she come from? Where does like I wanted them to be sticking out stars. 
I like women that got their stuff together. They look put put together well. Like mm -hmm. your hair is done. You got your, you know, if you don't wear a lot of makeup, that's fine. But have yourself presentable together. and looking together. Don't come in there looking any kind of way, throw it away. I look at stuff like that. Yeah. That's, that's part of the requirements. Yeah. Like to be up to par, to have your <laughs> together, have your <laughs> lined up, know mm -hmm. how to talk, know how to act in certain aspects. Don't mm -hmm. be getting too damn drunk. You know, that that's what I'm looking at. That's yeah. what I was looking at at the auditions. Period. Yeah. So how many really girls made it? 13. 13 girls on mm -hmm, the mat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Girl, look at you shaking your head. Them girls ran me crazy really? in the house. How long did you guys film? Um, It was seven days. I wish it would have been three. <laughs> <laughs> we could have stopped at three. Yeah. No, we legit could have stopped at five. Mm -hmm. But I really want to help the girls. We had a lot to do. I wanted to take them through challenges. Mm -hmm. I want to bond with them, do outside activities, outside the club and stuff yeah. like that. It wasn't, you know, strictly in the club. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot. And then dealing with all 13 girls and them dealing with each other and mm -hmm. how they, because I wanted them to focus on the bag and, mm -hmm. and learning and getting something from me. But you know, girls going to bicker and fight. Yeah, you was on sure. bad girls. You for know, sure. y'all yeah. in the house. They, girl, wait till you see it. Girl. They pull one of y'all moves. I'm screaming. Who got their mattress thrown in the pool? Be no, I'm just playing. <laughs> it was some. listen, it was something like that. Girl, it was okay, a mess. so you were on P-Valley, right? Mm -hmm. How did you get the opportunity? Because I actually auditioned for that show twice. <laughs> And that's like a go before I die. Yes. I want to be on P Valley. Like I want to be on that show. I love it that show. It definitely was a go before I die. I was I like, feel like you what could get the a on there, sis. Listen, this the thing. Okay. When P Valley, I was only on there as a guest. A guest. Because they reached out to me and they wanted me to do it. But they paid good just to be a little guest and sit up there and watch Jocelyn ferry across the thing. I was mm -hmm. like, this is cool. Yeah. But um, it was Katori honoring like the girl she feel like women she feel like was dancers and broke into the industry and did what they needed to do. Yeah. So I feel I was like, damn, this feel good to be honored for something right. like that because you know, going into strip club, people looking at you like, bitch, you ain't on, you a stripper, you right. a you know. But to be honored was good. But I actually went out for the part of Mercedes when they was first cast. Well, not Mercedes. I went out for the autumn. Oh, you would. Oh, I could see that. Right. I could Girl. see that. And I could have been Mercedes, right? Period. Okay, Listen, next season. But we love them, like, though. Five more seasons. Girl, and you know, Autumn quit. Autumn quit? She quit. Autumn quit. She said she was done. Wow. So Autumn quit. I don't know why she quit. And uh,